Hi, welcome to the Israel First television program with myself, Martin Blackham, and with my wife, Natalie Blackham, from our studios in Jerusalem. As we come into this winter season, as we're uh, coming up to the uh, festival of Hanukkah, we welcome you across the world, wherever you're watching. Great to have you with us. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, here in the land of Israel, bringing you news and in interviews and bringing you behind the scenes and all sorts of features. We are doing uh, also some teaching, I believe, today on Amalek, or Amalek, depending on how you want to say the name. So Natalie is going to be uh, talking a bit about that, I believe, today. Well, um, one of the things we uh, do as a programme is we try and bring you uh, what's happening really behind the scenes in Israel. Uh, the things that the mainstream media are not covering. Now, one of the stories that's been featured in the mainstream media just this week is the nonsensical story. It's um, a complete con. Is the Israeli Health Ministry, which has been doing some very strange things over the last three years. The Israeli Health Ministry now blames climate change, of all things, for diseases associated with the COVID experimental gene therapy injectable. The Ministry of Health told uh, the mainstream media of the laughable claim that it has identified a connection, thus they have identified a connection, allegedly, between global warming and an increase in the number of hospitalizations of Israelis, listen to this, for heart, brain and blood vessel diseases, despite the fact that these are all adverse reactions to the experimental COVID jab. Meanwhile, a major study has revealed, this is a major study in Israel, Natalie, a major study has revealed that cardiac arrests among young people uh, have increased by over 25% in Israel after the jab. The Massachusetts Institute of Technology research found a, st a statistically significant correlation between an increase of cardiovascular emergency calls and the mass COVID experimental gene therapy injectable in Israel. A research of the data from Israel uh, by Scientific Reports and Nature magazine showed a strong correlation between a more than 20, listen to this folks, a more than 25% increase in heart-related emergency calls for ages 16 to 39 and the nation's COVID experimental jab campaign. Which means one out of four. Now, yeah, it's a one out of four. It's now, it's, uh, this is very disturbing. And the other thing is, <clears throat> as journalists, we, keep, we have a lot of information that comes to us. One of the news sources which provides us with information is United Hatzalah. And one of the staggering things is the amount of calls they're now getting uh, for heart-related um, accident, for heart-related issues. Um, which is not for all people. And it's not for old people. Yeah, it's, this is and this is, it's becoming almost the major, the major thing that they're dealing with. I mean, there's other things such as road accidents, etc., and other accidents that happen. But the major thing seems uh, that we're picking up is the cardiovascular events. The peer-reviewed study that I was just talking about was conducted by Professor Retsef Levy uh, and Christopher Sun, both from MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology with help from somebody we know, Dr. Ellie Jaffe, of Israel's National Emergency Ambulance Service, Magan David Adom. The authors analysed MDA data from 2019 to 2021 concerning emergency calls for this younger age group, with potential factors including the jab rates, evaluating emergency call codes for cardiac arrest, uh, from January 2019 to June 2021 and they were able to study how many of these emergency calls were coming in with the different conditions and uh, they could observe the trends in roughly 14 months before the uh, COVID, the 10 months of the first two weeks of the supposed pandemic and the period of the alleged third wave along with the experimental gene therapy jab campaign. So they examined all these periods of time. They didn't just examine one period of time, but all these three different periods of time. The researchers found a, statistic, st a statistically significant increase of 25% in this younger age bracket during the period of January through May 2021, compared with a similar period in 2020. So they compared it with the period from the previous year. 
Weekly emergency call counts were significantly associated with the rates, now listen to this, of the first and second jab in Israel administered to this age group. Finally, a study in the US uh, from the Center for Disease and Con uh, Control, the CDC, has shown the risk of car myocarditis following the jab is about, listen to this, 133 times greater than the background risk in the population. This means ex the experimental gene therapy injectable increases the risk of suffering myocarditis and autoimmune disease caused by inflammation of the heart by 13,200%, Natalie. This uh, absolutely staggering um, and um, very shocking information that's coming forward in Israel. Now, another thing that's uh, been concerning us, and we've talked about this before, is the connection of Israel and China, Natalie. Now, an Israeli diplomat, and this is an unbelievable story, but it was in the mainstream media, an Israeli diplomat has been held in prison-like conditions over China's zero COVID policy. Many of you may be familiar with it, perhaps you're not. It's basically stamping down on everything, um, on the population, movement, on freedom, freedom to shop, freedom to do anything. Mr. Eddie Shapira, Israel's consul in China, said the conditions of COVID hospitalization in China are like jail. This is the this is the senior is a diplomat is, senior Israeli diplomat in Shanghai. He says they're like jail, described being totally isolated in an aquarium with a locked door for ten days. The Israeli Consul General in Shanghai, Eddie Shapira, was held in Chinese so-called medical facility, which was like being incarcerated for 10 days as part of China's inhumane and dangerous zero COVID policy. Uh, Shapira said the conditions are reminiscent of a prisoner that experienced the 10 most bizarre days that I could imagine. Consular Shapira said that nothing could have prepared him for the experience I found, my, found myself in a room between two hallways, a kind of aquarium, two single beds, two automatic doors that open with a remote control, in other words, they're locked, and a tiny window, like opening for a tray of food. Did you hear that? There's just two beds, two doors, and a, and a thing for food. It's not recommended for the claustrophobics or for anyone, Shapira wrote. The United States ambassador, meanwhile, to China, Nicholas Burns, argued that the detention of diplomats and separation from their families over contracting COVID or being in close contact with someone who has it, has it allegedly, is a violation of the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations. In other words, China is breaking the law. Uh, and the United States got Beijing to promise that US diplomats could quarantine at home. And if they couldn't, the US was prepared to evacuate any diplomat who the Chinese government would not exempt from being sent to a holding facility. This is what the US ambassador said. We have legal rights here and we're claiming those rights under the Vienna Convention, which is very important to us. And so we've held the line, he said in an interview with the Washington Post. Now, uh, China's dangerous and inhumane COVID lockdowns which are not COVID lockdowns, just lockdowns, have led to 10 deaths, by the way, in a, in a lockdown apartment fire, resulting in major protests around the country. Now, Israel freedom protesters are extremely concerned because of the partnership of Israel with China. We've talked about this before. Uh, the involvement of China and is um, Chinese industry, Chinese government, the Chinese government in Israel. Now, what happened in China was a fire killed 10 people in a high-rise building in Amrakui, capital of the Xinjiang region, causing widespread public anger across China. Quite normal, as many internet users reported that residents in the apartment could not escape because the building was locked down by Chinese authorities. Maybe some of you have even seen them welding up the doors of apartments. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. I mean, what this has to do with health who knows? It has nothing to do with health. The fire has fueled, or had fueled, a wave of civil disobedience unprecedented in mainland China since uh, Xi Jinping assumed power a decade ago and has since ebbed amid a heavy and violent police presence. In other words, the police have stopped the protests. Chinese authorities have initiated the highest emergency response of a level of 
censorship. I'll repeat that again. That's a level, the highest emergency response in censorship. In other words, they're not allowing the stories about what's going on in mainland China to come out. And you might say, well, what has that got to do with Israel? Well, Israel is very involved with China. You may not know this, uh, but the involvement both of Chinese business and Chinese governments in, the, in Israel is growing. We have in the food sector, Bright Food Group from China has a 77, which is almost a complete holding, percent stake in Israel's largest, listen to this, Israel's largest food company, Tnuva. In the construction sector and transportation sector, China Civil Engineering Construction Corps was a subcontractor of the Carmel Tunnel, an apartment building, the Gailon Tunnel. China Railway Tunnel Group was involved in building Tel Aviv's light railway line. The Shanghai International Port Group is building a new terminal at Haifa Port with operational rights for 25 years. Uh, and by the way, they are, uh, the container port is completely run by the Chinese. Uh, China Harbour Engineering Company won the contract to build a new port in Ashdod. And the CRRC Chang Chai Railway Vehicles Company won the tender to supply railway cars for Tel Aviv's railway line. In other words, there's a huge, huge investment. Now, there's another story which I haven't had a chance to put on our news. So if you read our news, you won't have seen the story. Is about uh, Chinese uh, authorities setting up a police station yes. in Israel. Apparently, um, the China, China has been setting up these police stations in every nation. Uh, they're particularly, Natalie, having an effect with the uh, monitoring of Chinese citizens in Israel. But who knows what they're up to? Yeah. And so this is very concerning. Why is it concerning for us as believers? Because this is the part of the puzzle a major part of the puzzle of the end time scenario that we're go that we're in. I was going to say we're going into. We're already in it. Yes. We're in this yes. end time yes. drama, and part of this control, the draconian dra control in China over people's lives, over food, over finance. You know, you uh, over movements. They can't. You can't go on a train without having this pass and everything. We need to watch this very carefully and say, well, what has that got to do with Israel or us? Well, it's an experimental place, China is, for the end time scenario. It's ex a ex place where the, they're experimenting with draconian regulations. So watch out because it's us who are next in the firing line and we need to watch China very carefully. You know that. It's so true. And you know, when, when you say that, we know we are at war. We can see it, we can feel it. Now, the main media doesn't say anything about it, but there is a war, and it's not just a war. I mean, it's a double-edged war, okay? There is a war spiritually, and there is a war down. Now, do we have also a blueprint to see, where, to see that in the Torah, in the Bible? Yes, we can. And this is a time where we can speak about Amalek. Now, this is interesting because I've learned about this uh, when, I, when we started really to learn more about the Torah and see how the Jewish people see the Torah and, and read it. Suddenly, uh, and so you read the Bible differently. It's like Abraham, Jacob, um, I mean, Isaac and Jacob, they become like, relatives i would say like we say that abraham is the father of our faith yes so obviously we need to know about him and exactly father of our faith faith in hebrew is emuna and we're going to speak about it the story of amalek is the story of our life like when you have emuna when you have faith and when you have doubt now it's interesting because the name amalek you know, you can play also with the numbers in with with the words in in the Torah, and Amalek is two hundred and forty when you count the the letters, and is also another word which is safek, which is doubt, and we are going to see we can see that is part of all the game. Now, two very important passages where we speak about Amalek, and you can dig into it, is Exodus seventeen. 
And the other one is Deuteronomy 25. Now, Exodus is when God is speaking. You know, the first five books, God speak about uh, uh, speak to his people. And in, in Deuteronomy is Moses who speak to the people. So he is giving another kind of the side of the story, but with all of it together, it really gives you a big, bigger picture. So Exodus 17, people who are learning a bit of Hebrew is Shemot 17, and Deuteronomy is Devarim, okay? So you have also Numbers 24, if you really want to dig very hard, um, I mean very deep, um, but the two main ones are Exodus 17 and Deuteronomy 25. There is like... I can speak for at least one hour about it, obviously I can't. So I'm going to give you like roughly where we are at. The interesting thing is that we are speaking about two wars, one in the heavens and one down here, which is happening now. And you have Moses, Moses go to pray and he pray for like he's doing the spiritual war. And uh, Joshua, Yeshua in Hebrew, he goes, Moses said, go and take some man of war and go to do the war with Amalek directly. Now, interesting enough, so he goes to do it and they defeat Amalek, but not totally. And Joshua was a bit like, wow, I, I didn't defeat it all, you know, all. And he's like, God said, no, it's okay, because this is not the end and they will have some other time and he say at the end of uh, Exodus, uh, let me read it because it's very important what he said. Because when we believe in God, we are part of this war. Okay, sometimes we sing, oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord, we are with God, yes. But we are still part of a war. And this is what um, God said to Moses, write this as a remembrance in the book and recite it in the ear of Joshua because you see he was he was afraid saying I haven't finished my work I haven't annihilated them I took the mighty ones but the wicked one I could have had them but God make that he didn't finish the the, the work totally hundred percent that I shall surely erase the memory of Amalek from under the heavens Moses built an altar and called it his name, Adonai, is my miracle. Adonai Nisi, okay? Because it's God who is doing the thing. He wants us to be involved, but it's him who is working with us. And he said, for the hand is on the throne of God. Hashem, Adonai, maintains a war against Amalek from generation to generation, okay? So till the end of time, we have to fight Amalek. So who is Amalek? Very interesting. <clears throat> I don't know if I can go through all of it, but okay, okay. We, we are like 70 nations. You see it with Noah when in, uh, in Genesis, God created 70 nations and there is another one, Israel. And Israel was going to give his covenant and they were a light to the nation to show how to live and to believe in one God. So now a lot of people believe in one God and but we still have to fight Amalek because he wants and okay and Amalek is not really a nation of, okay who is Amalek again I mean there is so many you know so many things Amalek is the grandson of Esau very very important because Esau was the son you know that of Isaac it, Isaac as Esau and Jacob. And Esau was a man of the world. And so Jacob loved Esau singing because he knew that God wanted to bring his kingdom here. So Jacob likes Esau. But Esau wasn't doing the right thing. And Esau was pretending very often that he knew the word, that he was like following and asking a lot of questions to his father. But he was religious, he was playing a game. But Jacob was in the tent and he was, he was studying Torah for having a relationship with God. Okay, this is like two very different things. And Amalek wanted the power of this world, but 
and is the grandson of Esau, so he, he carries something from Esau. But Jacob wanted to follow God and follow the Torah for having a relationship with God, not playing with the word like I know so much, no. Discovering God in the Torah, and this is what God wants to us. So the, the thing for us now in the war that we are, oh yeah, something also very important. So in these two passages, in one of the passages, let me find, I think it's the one in Exodus. Yeah, in Exodus, God say, I will blot out the remembrance of Amalek. So God say, I will do it. And when you read in Deuteronomy, he say, you shall blot out the remembrance of Amalek. So is it him or is it, or is it us? No, it's like him with us. And like, we can't make it all. It's God is going to do it. But he wants us. We are not on earth. It's us who can do the work. Now, we, you know, we've been, um, I mean, there is so much things to say. You know that we, we are going as the world now. Okay, now this is not just the Jewish people, because there is believers who believe in God all around the world. So the war that's happening now, and it's the last one, okay? So God is asking us to wake up, to be with him, to blot out the remembrance of Amalek. For that, we need Emunah, we need faith, and he will work with us. Now, another example that we can see is when the Hebrew were coming, they were, it was the, their redemption coming out of Egypt, Great, wonderful, God has done so many miracles with the plagues and they come out they go, and suddenly they are in front of the Red Sea and they have the army behind. And it's like, that's it, we can't do anything. And God say, okay, I'm coming. So, he, so one of them had a Muna had faith. He put his foot in the sea and when it was up to here that he couldn't do more, God came, there was the wind, and they went through the Red Sea. So they escaped, they were liberated, but not only that, all the army of the Egyptians were killed. And it's not them who did it, God did it. So you see, we know we are going through now this major redemption. We are going to have the millennium after, which will be another time, but right now we are at the end of the war of Amalek. And that war is also Gog and Magog. So we are in this war of Gog and Magog. I can't explain all the things, but this is very important. Now, what we need is what we say, a Muna. Now you read again here, this is just amazing because the Hebrew language, you know how it's beautiful. And he speak clearly when, so he speak about Moses. So Joshua does the, the work, but Moses do the spiritual work. And he has Aaron and he has Hu, who is helping him and holding his hands. And it's written, when he lowered his hands, Amalek was stronger. So his hands become heavy, which is interesting. It's like he was carrying also the, the glory of God. And they took a stone and they and he sat on it, and Aaron supported his hands, and and the other one who was on the other side, and Moses' hands remain with in faithful prayer is written here. It's, it's, there is a lot of different um, uh, translation because it's difficult to translate really. But in Hebrew, is Yadav Emuna. His hands were the hands of faith. This is what God is asking us. We need to have faith. And what we, what we are standing with the word of God. And it's the word of God who gives us faith. And we say, Amalek, bring doubt. So no, God will be God. He's asked us to stand on his word. And he will do the major work. But he's asking us to Take our right position with him, standing with faith with him. And this is where we are at now. It is a war of faith.
Yeah, it's interesting because uh, we don't think of it maybe necessarily as a war. Many people may think it's just a, a medical crisis or a climate crisis, allegedly, which isn't true. Or maybe, you know, a, a crisis of resources. But it's not true. It's a war. Mm -hmm. And it's the end time war. Mm -hmm. and you know, it's interesting again, when you say that, I'm just, I just want to, remember, to, to remind you so there was this war with Joshua. The next time, it was when there was the first king in Israel, King Saul. And the prophet Samuel said to him, now that you are king, first thing that you are going to do, you have to fight Amalek. And Shaul, Saul didn't do it. And his kingdom was taken out of his hands because he didn't do the very important thing that God was asking him because Amalek can't be... When Amalek is strong, the throne of God is lower. And so God said, now I want to rise up. You are, you are going to bring my kingdom. So you need to go to fight it, to fight Amalek. And Saul didn't understand and he lost the kingdom. So the, the, the interesting thing about the, the war we're in is that um, you don't realize we're in a war until you start examining the facts. Now, one of the, uh, one of the things that happened, uh, uh, maybe this happened where you live, uh, it happened in Israel was we only had what they called necessary shops and necessary professions were operated during the lock during our lock our lockdown just as we were talking at the beginning of the program about the uh, terrible lockdowns inhumane and dangerous and violent lockdowns in China we also had lockdowns here now there was only shops which were necessary to open uh, and there was only professions necessary to operate. Now, what does that? What was that like? Well, that was like the Second World War. That there were only shops for necessities and professions uh, of necessity uh, were allowed to operate during the Second World War. So, this same thing now, exactly the same thing was happening and we didn't realize we were fooled by the authorities we were fooled by the mainstream media that this was uh, allegedly some sort of um, um, operation for medical reasons and what it was in fact is uh, we're in the middle of a war and so uh, and they don't want this these people are taking the name of god away of everything they don't want the torah they don't want if you listen to the world economic forum and if you listen to Arari, he's a Jew, but he's not, he's not really a Jew. He's an Israeli, and he's fighting against God. Now, um, there's a lot of information we'd like to share with you, but the, the time has run out, and uh, so we, we can't today. But we run a daily news program on the website. You can just uh, click on the media page and you can see under the tab that there's Israel news we do a daily news story so you can get the news every day uh, we do appreciate your support thank you so much for everybody who's standing with us it is only because of the support of our friends and partners across the world uh, that we can come to in your home today uh, to bring you these uh, very very important news stories very very important teachings about Amalek into your home um, and uh, the website is www.israelfirst.org. And remember, we're the program that looks at the land, the people, and the language.